Um, so listen for God's word from Psalm 13. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord, my God. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep the sleep of death, and my enemy will say, I have prevailed. My foes will rejoice because I am shaken. But I trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me, please? Loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. One of the things that I love the most about the Psalms is that they almost seem as if the author were journaling when he wrote them. For those of you not familiar with journaling, it is very similar to um, someone writing in, in a diary, where in diaries they will tell their diary absolutely everything, personal things that they wouldn't say to anybody else. People tell their diaries how great their day is, how rotten their parents are. They are the, the places where everything just comes out in an unfettered way. Now a journal is very similar to a diary, except in journaling, it almost seems that you're spending a little more time on the spiritual side of our lives. And I see, as I read the Psalms, I can, I can almost sense the, the psalmist journaling as he's experiencing God. I can picture in Psalm 8, where the psalmist would be sitting on the side of the hill late one night when he wrote, O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. When I look at the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you care for us, mortals that you consider us? I can't tell you the number of times that I have stood out in a field or on top of the hill on a dark night and just witnessed the stars, the vastness of the Milky Way, and just be completely reduced to tears because there's nothing else to do. Can you hear the sheer awe and wonder of the psalmist from the 139th Psalm? Oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up, you discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down. You are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high, I cannot attain it. How many have prayed as Jesus prayed from the 22nd Psalm? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer by night and I have no rest. Or from our reading this morning in the 13th Psalm, how long, O Lord, will you forget me 
forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear the pain in, in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? There is a depth to the relationship that the psalmist had with God. He knew that he could say anything to God. He could tell God exactly what he thought about things. He could tell God his frustration with God because the psalmist never forgot who he was talking to. The psalmist knew that he was in full communion with God. There is an intimacy there with the Creator that we have lost over the ages. If you read the book of Genesis, you read how Adam and it was very natural for Adam and Eve to walk in the garden with God. Ever since the fall, however you want to define the fall, we have lost that intimacy. We have lost the ability to walk in the garden with our God. And so for me, the psalmist comes a little bit closer to reestablishing that intimacy, that relationship with God. Our writer wasn't afraid to let God have it when everything was going wrong. And when he was done with his tirade, he still remembered that he was in conversation with God. And at the end of our passage, he wrote, but I trust in your steadfast love, my heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Oh, oh how I wish I could be so much more like the psalmist. To feel close enough to God, to let God have it when everything is going wrong, and I have nowhere else to turn and no one else to, to yell at and still know that I am held in the palm of God where I can sing praise and give thanks for all of life. To have the depth of a relationship that knows and trusts that God is with me all the time, not just when I want God around to know that I was created in the image of God, that I am loved, forgiven, and sent out to share that kind of love. In just a few minutes, we are going to catch a glimpse of all of this when we baptize Addison. In the waters of baptism, before Addison is able to form a single word in her mouth, God chose her. Before Addison has any concept that God exists, God claims her. I know a lot is made of the mark of the beast in Revelation because that's great fun to talk about. But folks, remember, in the waters of baptism, we are claimed, marked, and sealed by God forever. I've started reading Philip Yancey's book on prayer. At the end of the second chapter, he, he wrote this. In prayer, I shift my point of view away from my own selfishness. I climb to the top of the timber line and look down on the little dot that is myself. I gaze into, into the stars and recall what role I or any of us have in a universe beyond comprehension. In prayer, it is an act of seeing the reality of life, but for a moment from the eyes of God. And I think the psalmist innately understood this. This is what he wrote about in the psalms. He knew the pain and the suffering and the anguish that comes from being human. He also knew the utter joy and wonder 
that is a part of life all at the same time. And over and above all of this, somehow inexplicably intertwined in all of life, is God. I do not have the vocabulary to properly explain this. That may be why the Psalms, most of the Psalms are written as poems, for poems have a way of stirring our imaginations in a way that no prose can ever do. This is also where maybe a picture is a whole lot better at explaining something, especially when we are talking about God. So if you would come, let us remember, celebrate, and wonder that God chose us at our own baptism as we celebrate the baptism of Addison Grace Snyder.